right, so my question is, do y'all know who Conor McGregor is? Yes. Yeah. About Floyd Mayweather? Yes. Yeah. And LeBron James? Yeah. All right, all right. All right, so what do you think that, uh, what's the three things that you think uh, these people have in common? Athletes, robots.
was done. I wanted to quit. I hated it. It's not that I hated it, but I was just wore out. I was tired. Uh, I was just ready to go back to living a normal life. But I had a buddy, man. And here's, the, here's my second point. It's surrounding yourself with positive people. See, I had a friend who was started training with me at the same time. And after a week went by, uh, a week went by, then two weeks went by, and he hit me up. He's like, man, what are you doing? I was like, my, my girl, man, I, I think I'm done. I was like, I'm tired, I'm wore out, I'm broke. I was like, I, I don't want to train anymore, man. It's just consuming too much of my time. And I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed sitting at home playing the PlayStation way more than going to the gym. That was a lot easier, a hell of a lot easier. Right, then going to the gym, getting busted nose, busted lip, coming home, getting up, going to work, 4.30 in the morning, playing PlayStation was a lot easier. He told me, he said, man, you do this, Josh, you're going to regret it to the day you die. He said, why don't you come to the gym with me? We ain't got to work out hard, but just come with me, man. Just get back in there, just have fun. You know, quit making it a job and have fun. So obviously, I went because I'm standing here today, but here's the point is we have to surround ourselves with people who are going to push us forward. See, Mike could have been like, man, I know, I know how you're feeling, bro. You know what? Just go ahead and quit. You know, it'll be okay, man. You make good money. You make $27 an hour. Just go ahead. It doesn't matter, man. You know? But he did. He was pushing me. He, was, he encouraged me to move forward instead of move backwards. Guys, that's what we got to do, you know? How many of you all would say that we have... That you have 10 or 15 friends you can call up right now on the phone. Raise your hand, right? 10 or 15 friends. Well, let me tell you the reality of this, guys. 10 years from now, when you're 19, 20 years old, those, three, uh, those 10 or 15 friends, you might talk to three of them, maybe two. Some of y'all might not talk to any of them because as you change as individuals, as you grow, and you can start becoming more mature and, 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 and growing. You know, growing positive, uh, at, uh, I guess I should say positive growth, then your friends are going to start changing too, right? And your friends are going to change in the direction that you're going. So if you're going backwards, you're not moving forwards, guess what? Your friends are just going to keep getting shittier. They're going to keep going you into the situation that you're in now. So it's very important that we surround ourselves with the right people. And the third thing I want to talk about is a never give up mentality. All right? September 2010, I made my Bellator debut against uh, John Troyer. At that time, I had four fights. John had uh, 15 fights. All right? But this was too big of an opportunity for me to miss. Anytime a big promotion shows up in your hometown and asks you to fight, you got to take it. Right? Or they might not call you back ever again. So. Uh, even though he had a lot more experience than me, I mean, I could not wait to get the cage and fight that night. Uh, you know, I had like over 100 people show up from back home. He had a big crowd. He was the hometown kid. We were actually the main event on Bellator after the main card went went off TV. So it was like it was a, it was a pretty big deal. It was a cool experience. But here's the thing: within the first five seconds of the first round, I got a huge cut over my left eye. Halfway through the first round, he caught me with a knee, split me in, uh, through the, uh, across my forehead. So here I was in the first round, not even five minutes in, uh, into the fight, I already had two cuts. Second round comes out, you know, I do a little better, I start getting my time, and I start uh, landing some shots and scoring some points. Then the third round comes, and guys, that's where I had to make, make a choice, right, of giving up or not. Anybody know what a crucifix position is? So imagine, you know, you've seen the picture of Jesus, right? He's on the cross. He's on the cross like this. So imagine this. I take a sloppy shot. I'm on the ground. And I'm laying like this. Okay? And he's laying his body across me. He's got this arm pinned with one of his knees. And he's answering the phone with this hand. So my arm's trapped in between his arm. My arm's like this. So there's no getting out. And all of his weights across my body. And I was in that position for like 20 seconds. Now, that don't seem like a long time. But when somebody's standing there and they're dropping elbows down on you, that's a long time. That'll make you think about things. That'll make you think, 
if you really want to do do what you're doing, you know, if you really want to do this sport or not. And uh, I, I told myself, I was like, man, you can't give up. You can't give up. But what you can do is get up and win the people's respect. Because at this point, I wasn't winning the fight. I was already down two rounds, uh, bloody. Uh, but it was a war, and, that, and that's what I did. I, I was able, man, I just kept rocking back and forth. I don't even know how I got out with willpower. Uh, I mean, y'all can actually go back and watch this on YouTube if you type in Josh Hart versus John Troyer. Um, but here's the thing. If I would have gave up that night, I wouldn't be standing here today. Right? And after, after that, I went on and tried out for the Ultimate Fighter. I made it through all three rounds. They flew me out here to Vegas. And uh, after, yeah, well, they flew me out. And they told me I was going to make the show. And then they came back and told me, uh, hey, we're canceling the show. So after that, I went on and fought boxing. Um, there was no easy fights in boxing for me either. I fought the number one seed in the Olympic trials, Jonathan Hamm. I fought Charles Warren, who was in NABO and WBO champion of the world before he lost his title to Anthony Joshua, who is the heavyweight champion of the world right now. Uh, but I guess I'll tell you that to tell you this. Uh, so after, after the boxing, so I spent trying for the ultimate fighter. I did. I made it. Then they told me they, they just canceled the show. I went over to boxing for two years. See, I was about to walk away from the sport of MMA, or walk away from fighting in general. You know, I felt like I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. Ultimate fighter didn't work out. Guess what? It's time to hang it up. Well, my old boxing coach always told me, hey man, you know, you could make the Olympic team if you would have listened to me when you first came to the gym. So I hung on to those words, and that's why I pursued boxing. And then, um, I, when I fought Charles Martin, I ended up losing to him, and basically they promised me, hey, you meet this kid, we'll fly you out to California, we'll house you, we'll, we'll build your record up, and you know, try to get a, a small world title around your waist. Well, after losing to him, you know, I come home, of course I'm sad, right? Like, I just lost another huge fight in my life, and I was about to give up, give up for the third time. Okay, so that's three times in my career that I was about to give up. And then my buddy texted me, he's like, hey man, the Ultimate Fighter Trials are coming to Indianapolis, which was about six hours where, where I was from. And so I decided, I was like, you know what? It's my last shot. I'm gonna drive up there. I hadn't fought MMA in two years. Uh, I made it through all three rounds. They flew me out to Vegas. I get home, guess what? They called me up. Hey man, we can't put you on. You've been inactive for two years. But uh, I'm working on trying to bring you on as an ultimate. And, and that's what happened. They ended up making me fly out here. Uh, I flew out to Vegas. I stayed at Palace Station Casino. Uh, I had to cut 20 pounds in two days. And, and I wasn't even guaranteed to make it on the show. But the guy that was at our place, he missed weight by four pounds. So I was on weight. I stepped on the scale. I won my fight to get in the house. I tried to go my fight to get in the house. I turn around. Anybody know who Corey Anderson is? No, uh, he's the number six light heavyweight champion, or not light, number six light heavyweight uh, guy in the world right now in the UFC. I fought him on the show, lost to him, and I ended up going home. Moved, uh, sold everything I owned. I sold my motorcycle, sold my Jeep, and I moved out here to Las Vegas in hopes that the UFC would hear my story be like, man, this guy really wants it. Let's bring him back and give him a second shot. Because I hadn't done MMA for two years prior to the show. But guess what? That didn't happen. So now here I am. I've been out here for five years. And you know what? I'm still not in the UFC. But I am in talks with the FFC right now on CBS. Uh, I'm a personal trainer, like you said. I help people every day change their lives. Uh, and then I'm also in the real estate business helping my wife. And I say this, I say that to say this, even though I didn't get the UFC contract that I wanted, I'm still living a life that I love. See, I've been in this now for 13 years. This wasn't something that happened overnight. This was something that took me 13 years to get to. And now I'm standing here talking to you all. I may not have that UFC contract, but 
I don't go to work and build four class every day doing something I hate. And that's something, again, guys, that, that goes for you all. You know, y'all can change, y'all can change this situation. This ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. You know? All you gotta do is be consistent. You want better grades? Go home and study every night. Every single night. Just make an hour out of your schedule before you get on that PlayStation, before you hop on social media. And just study. It's just one hour. But you can't do it Monday night. Ah, you know what? I ain't gonna study for Tuesday, but I'll study one. No, it don't work like that. Because you gotta be consistent. Consistency, old coach once said, consistency over time equals results. Consistency over time equals results. Whatever you're consistent, whatever you're consistently doing will be the results that you get. If you're consistently eating bad, you're going to get bad results. Right? If you're consistently talking to class and not paying attention, you're going to consistently get bad results. You're not going to make good grades. So it comes down to you guys. So if you're consistent, and then you choose friends wisely. Man, don't be hanging around these people that's got you in this situation. Where are they at now? Uh, how many How many of you all in here has a friend that got you in this situation? Anybody? See? And why are we still hanging out with them? Where are they at now? So we've got to change our friends. And then, the last thing is we can never give up. Because no matter how, how, how tough times get, we're going to persevere and we're going to make it through, you know? This, look, y'all, there's probably maybe, I don't know, nobody looks like they're 18 in here. Anywhere from 6 to 18 years old, y'all still got the rest of your life to live. This ain't nothing. What you all are going through isn't nothing. Guys, listen, I love you all and y'all can change your circumstances. You got to do those three, three things. Be consistent, surround yourself with positive people, and have a never give up mentality. And that's it. That's all I got.